Okay, so what I'm going to focus on is not necessarily any um, any new ideas in marketing because marketing is is marketing. You want to get the word out about your book, but maybe just some new new venues for for getting those uh, for getting the word out. As we all know, uh, more and more people are sort of living online and blurring the boundaries between where they work and where they play. And um, <clears throat> so I just put a few things together about what you can do to. Uh, put the word out about your book and, and maybe how publishers can and get involved too. And, and definitely all of us are, are dipping our toes into that, that area and an author can, can only help in that, in, in that way. So sort of the basic things, some of the basic things you can do is just make your own website, add a blog to it. Website templates are, are free pretty much um, uh, through lots of different platforms, Google, WordPress, Live, you can, you can find free templates online, you make yourself a, a website and then you get your publisher to link to you. I mean, it's a very basic first step. Um, adding a blog is a little bit more commitment. A blog, in case, in case you don't know, most people know what blogs are these days, but in case you don't know, it's a web blog, which is like an online diary. And you, um, you update it as often as you're comfortable. Uh, some people are daily bloggers, other people are weekly bloggers, but it just lets people know what's going on in in your world, and uh, one of the ways that I mean, authors can start their own blogs, and they can and they can connect to each other in the same subject area. They can connect to their publisher, and uh, one of the things that uh, we've done, I think, once successfully, but it's something that uh, you can talk to your publisher about too, is that we've done what they call a, a blog tour on a book. We found a blogger. We had a book that was um, a fairly narrow audience. It was um, a religious studies. But there is a very active blogging community out there on these. Um, uh, that was a secret, the secret gospel of uh, of Mark, you know. And there's a very active um, blogging community out there on on this type of of uh, thing. So we sent a free copy to one of the main bloggers, and he blogged about it, and it sort of went, you know, virally out from there. So it's it's the word of mouth, but sort of online, and the and the author didn't have to tour because the author wasn't interested in touring. And as uh, Doug mentioned before, it's a, it was a scholarly monograph, not really designed for a, a touring budget, but it all happened online. So it's, it's old ways done in, old methods done in, in new ways. <clears throat> Some of the, um, so websites and blogs have been around for, for quite a while. Some of the newer things that are out there is a, um, a Facebook is um, a community online that many people are familiar with. And this is where I, when I talk about um, your personal life and your professional life, the lines blurring, you'll find, you know, if you were to go onto my Facebook site, you'd see all the people I, I know who are in my family, and then I've got another group of people I know who are publishers, and then I've got another group of friends who are authors that publish with our press, and then I've got, you know what I mean? And so there's lots and lots of groups, and they all, they all cross over and occasionally talk to each other because they see each other on, on my page, and authors can do the same thing. They can set up communities and... Um, and it's, it's linking to each other and networking and talking and forming groups and it's uh, so Facebook is Facebook is the the one right now. It may not be the one for much longer. It may be something new, but it's the one right now that everybody seems to be to be using and uh, it's certainly worth worth checking out. Um, I think the next step in that kind of online community is what they're calling open social, which is. I think it's just software that you can use to build these kinds of communities, and it's supposed to be more open access, not having to join. But I haven't haven't learned too much about that yet. I just did some some uh, searching when I was putting this together. One of the other things that is out there that some of the bigger publishers have done, and I'm not sure of any university presses have ventured into this or not, but I do know that academics are looking at it. Is Second Life. Second Life is an online community where you actually, it's a visual online community where you make yourself an avatar. So if you have a meeting in Second Life, you can see on screen people sitting around the table, even though you may all be, you may be around the world. So uh, one of my authors yesterday came up to me and said, why aren't you doing Second Life? And I said, because I can't figure it out. <laughs> I went in there, I made an avatar, and I walked around. <laughs> I it was a, an online game, actually. Yeah, it's, a com it, it's actually a community, and there's lots of business being done there. And she said, you didn't do the tutorial. And I said, well, I, I did. I read the billboards that my avatar walked up to. 
but she's teaching a course. I mean, one of her courses is on autobiography and, and um, sort of representations of self. So she makes her students do it in Second Life for a couple of weeks. And, and so she knows all about it. So she's eager now to teach me how to use it. I'm not sure how it's going to go. But the fact is that there's lots of that stuff out there. And, and um, publishers should uh, be aware that their authors, a lot of their authors are already pursuing this stuff academically. So they're going to want to, to push their marketing that way, too. Um, there's um, if you want sort of a list of social networking sites, what they what they call these Facebook and Second Life, Wikipedia is uh, a good source for all the different types. Um, after I'm finished here, I've got a handout here that does uh, list some of the things I'm talking about. But you can go to Wikipedia because they has there are broad platform social networks, and then there are niche niche ones. And and often I think in the scholarly publishing, you may be looking for a the niche ones to find find your people, so to speak. Um, something else you can do, and this is um, it's getting really popular on the internet, is uh, podcasting, which is um, it's like a radio or television, a uh, little clip, audio clip or video clip. You can put them on your website. You can distribute them through RSS. Um, RSS feeds are little pieces of uh, metadata that you can subscribe to. That um, so if you have um, your website can every day can update with um, with things that you want like to read. I have a I think about fifty or sixty RSS feeds. So every day when I sign on to my to my Google account, I read about what's going on in the publishing world through places like Book Ninja, Quill Inquire, um, Publishing Talk, um, Open Source Publishing. You know, there's a variety of them, and I check out my family's blogs, I check out the news blogs, and um, that's all delivered to me through our RSS feed. So it's a very easy thing to add to your own site, and then you can distribute that feed so that the people that you want to uh, reach will receive it daily without you having to do any more work. As long as you update your site, they'll get that update. So you can use that with your blogging, with your podcasting. Um, what else have I got here? One of the things that I've noticed as a publicist for our press is that it's very hard to get people interested in, um, and when I say people, I mean the trade bookstores, interested in doing readings for um, you know, the more scholarly books. They go, mm, yes, OK, mm -hmm. you know, they're not, they, and, but one of the things that, uh, that I do notice and, uh, is that some of the bookstores, especially in Toronto, are doing things um, that are not reading series, specifically Page's Bookstore. This is not and it's called This Is Not a Reading Series. <laughs> However, they're publicizing books, but you've got to come up with something um, interesting that uh, is not a reading to promote your book. And uh, so one of our authors that's forthcoming has um, another religious studies book, but he has a band. I'm not sure that Page's, magazine will, Page's uh, Bookstore will still be interested in that particular book, but I said to him, you know, do you want to play at your launch? Does your band want to play at your launch? He said, actually, I was thinking of writing some Gnostic songs. <laughs> you know, so there's an author. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd go around just to see that, actually. Exactly. Yeah. So there's an author who's already thinking, you know, outside, what can I, what can I do with my other interests in life to, uh, to help promote my book uh, that might otherwise have a very small audience? And that is, like, the key thing is, is that authors who are who think that way already, who are enthusiastic about promoting their book within um, and working with the publisher, they're almost always our most successful authors, um, the most successful books, the ones that are on the phone every few days saying, I was thinking of doing this. What does this sound? You know, um, those are the ones whose books sell because they're out there, they're out there doing that, that kind of work. Um, so some of the things I think that uh, those are all things that that authors can do, uh, and publishers as well can and can start looking at the same uh, types of things. I just got through my Facebook account yesterday. I got an update from one of the publishers. I'm part of a group. Um, I'm a fan of Anansi Books, and they are also Groundwork, which is the children's publisher. And I got a, an update from uh, Julie, their publicist, yesterday, saying that she's just started publishing their updates on Twitter. I thought. Twitter. Okay, what's Twitter? And uh, I went in to look at it, and uh, any of you who have Facebook know that uh, one of the things that you can do on a daily basis is update your status, so that every time you sign in, you see what your friends are doing. 
Well, Twitter is like just the status. There's nothing else. So you're just getting these little bites of information. And um, this publisher is sending out these little Twitter blurbs, you know, about maybe what's going on with their book. And I mean, that's it's something that the, that authors can do, publishers can do. This all costs time, but it doesn't cost much else, you know. So, and time is definitely valuable, but uh, there aren't a lot of other other costs involved. So, I thought, you know, that's just even as I was preparing this, and I had already printed it out, there was something new that came along and came my way. And I think I kind of went, I'm only vaguely familiar with Twitter, but it will do things like update your Facebook status. I think it will send messages to your SMS to your phone. It seems to do all these kind of polyvalent things at once. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's actually, you know, scary coordinating your social marketing for you, your social <laughs> connections for you. 